favorite Substack newsletters is Hopium Chronicles. You can find it at Hopium, H-O-P-I-U-M, chronicles.com. It's published by a veteran political analyst, a strategist and commentator. He worked on two presidential campaigns. He was in the Clinton war room, senior roles with the DNC, the DCCC, the NDN, and uh, one of the only ones who got the 2022 predictions right. Uh, it's Simon Rosenberg is the author, and Simon is with us today. Simon, welcome welcome to the program. I, I love your newsletter. I love the upbeat, optimistic perspective. Um, I hope you're not just engaging in happy talk here. Let me tell tell me why I should not be panicked right now, or at the very least, why yeah. you know there's there's a, a possibility we can pull this thing out given all the bad news and the New York Times polls and all that kind of like. Yeah, I mean, listen, Tom. First of all, thank you for just being a warrior for so many years now, and it's just a pleasure to to be here today. I'm a big fan and thank an you. admirer. So, um, yeah, and listen, I, I think here's my basic take on the election. Right, is that Joe Biden is a good president. The country is better off. We have a very strong case for re-election. The Democratic Party is strong. Uh, we've been winning elections all across the country. We're raising tons of money. Uh, and the party's pretty fired up as we go into the general. And then the question is, what do they have? What do the Republicans have? They have Trump, who's the ugliest political thing that any of us have ever seen, and a party that looks far more like a raging dumpster fire than a well-oiled political machine. And I think that when you push all that forward, as in the next five and a half months, as we go deeper into this election, I would much rather be us than them. And I'm very optimistic that we're going to win the election. How do we deal with the fact that uh, this was just published this morning, I believe, that uh, uh, a big analysis of TikTok finds that uh, yeah. pro-Trump posts are, are uh, outnumber pro-Biden posts by two to one, by 100 um, percent. The, uh, this other story that came out this week that 50 billionaire families have already put over almost, excuse me, a billion dollars into the election. And that's just reported money. That doesn't include the billions in dark money that will inevitably yeah. be coming. Uh, we've got some serious, well, and of course, Twitter, uh, you know, it looks to me like yep. the algorithm has been tweaked substantially to promote <laughs> right-wing causes. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, when Musk took it over, uh, for example, my Twitter Twitter feed just kind of collapsed. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm hearing the same thing from other high-profile progressives. What do we do about this? Or, or do you think we can, we can overcome these structural yeah. disadvantages? It's a great question, and I think it's very important to be balanced and understanding <clears throat> about this structural place that we're in. And let's just spend a few minutes talking about it because this is really important. And in many ways, this is more important than the polling, of the polling, because what the polling is showing us that it's a close election. Trump isn't ahead. He's not winning. We have a close election. Biden's gained a point or two in, in the recent months. The Democratic Party brand has gained three to four points. We're holding in the Senate. We've got good polling in the House. You know, right now, the way to think about this is that, you know, the election um, is very close. They're, they don't have large in the battleground states, I don't believe, right, looking at the polling. And what we do together could make the difference between us winning and losing this election. It's, you know, I think what's important about American politics now is that all of us have more capacity to do. It's not just giving money. It's making phone calls and writing postcards and texting and canvassing and all the work. This is part of the reason we've been outperforming expectations so much in recent years is because of all of you. I mean, all the people who are listening and watching today who've been, you know, making sure, doing the work to make sure their democracy doesn't slip away. And this is sort of our superpower. So first of all, I think we're in the process of building the most powerful democratic political machine that we've ever had. People are giving because of the fear of loss of democracy and the stripping of rights and freedoms away from more than half the population two years ago, that we're seeing unprecedented amounts of money going into our system. And what that's doing is that it's allowing us to build the biggest, most powerful campaigns that we've ever had allowing us to control the information environment, allowing us to push our performance on the ground and our, you know, our GeoTV operations to places that we've never been able to go. And it's a central reason why in places like the New York Three Tom Swazi race, all the polls had us winning there by two to three points. We won by eight points. And it's because we have this extra sort of supercharger now, passionate, patriotic Americans who are doing the work. They are going to bring it, right? Like I talk about sport uh, politics like being a basketball game the other team's going to score we just have to score more right mm -hmm. and and i and i look at this grassroots thing that we have now as somebody who's been doing this full time for 32 years we have the most powerful political machine we've ever had their political machine is actually ragged 
and 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 in 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 as a dumpster fire. The RNC is not going to mount a serious general election campaign. This is a problem because in presidential campaigns, all the money flows that you can use on the ground has to flow be hard dollars flowing through the party, and they're not raising hard dollars. There's a lot of traditional Republican donors are spinning the bit at this new MAGA-led party, and they're struggling to raise the kind of money that is the money you use on the ground in presidential elections. You can't make up that money with billionaire money. Because, and let me explain everybody, this is really important, if you give me a second, is that mm -hmm. in <clears throat> there's a law that um, federal campaigns pay what's called lowest unit rate on television, meaning that they have to pay the lowest rate of, available. So in places like Pennsylvania and Michigan, for a super PAC to to match uh, the you know the Biden campaign, they're going to have to spend four, five, six times more money to match the ad buys we're going to do. So they're not going to raise four, five, six times more money than we are. And so the Republican, this idea that all this big money is coming in, it's less useful money. They they don't get a dollar you know return on that dollar. Whereas the twenty five bucks you give to Biden, we get twenty five bucks worth of value out of that. So you got to keep that. In mind, in 2022, <clears throat> Republicans spend more money than we did, but we put more ads on the air and reached more voters than they did because of this efficiency of what I'm describing. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I do think we have to, we have one of the reasons you're here, Tom, is that the Republicans are louder than we are, right? They have invested much more in their wholly owned media, Fox News and all the other talk radio and everything else they have. <clears throat> and now you're seeing advantages emerge in TikTok. And I think we have to be much more purposeful and recognize that all of us also have a role to play in this. I mean, we cannot just be people that make phone calls, but taking the information you learn on this show and other places, spreading it through your networks, putting positive sentiment into our discourse every day, being like information age, you know, I call it the information age victory gardens, right? That we all have a role to play in shaping our discourse every day. And I think we have to feel like we have more agency over that than we do on our side. And and but you're right. I mean, I think the campaign right now. I just was on the campaign with one of the top digital guys in the campaign this morning. They're very aware of all this, and they are they're investing and in making huge strides. I think in social media. I think the social media that the Biden campaign has been producing so far, they're what they call organic content. You know, the stuff the campaign's producing, not the ads, is the best that any Democratic campaign's ever produced. Um, they have built the most sophisticated operation. Are we going to be able to match dollar for dollar, point for point, at, you know, video for video, uh, what the Republicans are going to do? We will in the seven states. In the seven states where this whole thing's going to be decided, we're going to be able to match them. Whether we can do it across the whole country, I don't know. But certainly we're going to try really hard. Yeah, it, it, that, that's encouraging. Um, uh, last question here. Uh, what yeah. What can the average person, as you know, somebody who's listening right now or watching us on on Free Speech TV or YouTube yeah. or whatever, what yeah. can the average person do to most effectively impact this uh, upcoming election? Yeah, I think there are two things. I mean, I, I think first of all, the number one job is we just have to beat Trump, right? I mean, it, that is the whole ball game. And so, however, you're going to help Joe Biden, whether it's give a little bit of money, decide you're going to make phone calls, because you know wherever you live, you can make phone calls into Michigan and Pennsylvania. You don't have to be there to be calling voters there, and you can be texting from outside. You can be writing postcards, right? If that's the preference, the pre preferred way. All of that stuff will start becoming available to everybody very soon. And you can commit to spend a couple hours a week, right, working for your democracy. If you don't want to work for Biden, you know, help Ruben Gallego in Arizona or Alyssa Slotkin in Michigan or, you know, uh, Angela also Brooks in Maryland or some of the key house races. Adopt a few house races where you're going to make phone calls or text. The other thing you can do, though, and I think that we have to reimagine the war room. I worked in the war room, as you said, you know, 32 years ago. We need to think of the war room now not as 20 sweaty kids drinking Red Bulls and producing TikTok videos, but we need to think of the war room as two to three million proud patriots getting up every day who love their country and who are spreading positive information through their own networks about Joe Biden, the country, our success, the Democrats, and countering the negative sentiment that MAGA pumps into our discourse every day with positive sentiment. Don't underestimate this. I mean, think of yourself as one voice in a chorus of two to three million people. If we all do this every day, we can have an extraordinary impact on our daily discourse. And so the key thing, as I like to say at Hopium, is that it's the most important thing of all is we need to do more and worry less. 
one of the ways you address your fear and concerns about the loss of democracy is by going to work. And what's so exciting, and one of the reasons I'm so confident that we're going to win, is that millions and millions of people, proud patriots who love their country, have been going to work. And we've been kicking their ass now for the last two years, Tom. And so I think if we just keep doing this work, we should have the election that we all want to have in November. That's great. Uh, Simon Rosenberg, hopiumchronicles.com is the website, H-O-P-I-U-M, hopiumchronicles.com. Simon, thanks so much for dropping by. Tom, thank you. And thanks for all that you do. My pleasure. My pleasure. We'll be back with more of the news of the news of the day and your calls in just a moment. Stay tuned.